Young gobos these days. All they do is bang around on their war drums. Whatever happened to good old fashioned generic goblin noise? This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. You can also use the promo code MTGMUDSTA for 5% off your orders from Face to Face Games, Canada's largest Magic the Gathering store, with qualified orders getting free shipping Canada wide. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic goblin gang. This video is sponsored by NordPass. I'm not sure if you've heard my end reel, but I'll often direct people to go catch me streaming on other sites. Longtime viewers may know that I actually haven't done that in a long time, and that's because I've been locked out of the account because I've forgotten my password. Thankfully, the cybersecurity experts over at NordVPN have come up with an amazing service called NordPass. NordPass is an easy to use and secure password manager. By using NordPass, you can forget about having to memorize all those passwords, not to mention it'll make logging in even faster. I can also securely store my credit card information, which I can then access whenever I'm buying magic cards from my favorite local game store's website. And that's not all, as there are some exciting features with the NordPass manager, such as password health analyzer and data breach scanner, which will help make sure your passwords are up to date and haven't been compromised. So if you're interested, use my link nordpass.com slash mtgmudsta or use my code mtgmudsta at checkout. You'll get massive savings off of a two-year NordPass premium plan by using my code or my link, plus you get an additional month for free. Hey gang, and welcome back to another multi-zone matchup. We have Dom back with us playing Amarith the Lustrous, keeping a plains, an island, forest, mana crypt, priest of Titania, reflector mage, and panharmonicon. Mathieu is playing his Silvala the Explorer return deck, keeping Archaeomancer's map, Drum Bellower, Fintorn Elves, Finale of Devastation, Entreat the Angels, Forest, and Temple of Plenty. Miguel is playing Baru, Fist of Crosa, keeping four forests, Elvish Mystic, Arcane Signet, and Eccentric Farmer. Joel is playing his Gerard Weatherlight hero deck, keeping Wear and Tear, Tybalt's Trickery, Mishra's Bobble, Shatterskull Smashing, Battlefield Forge, and the Snow-Covered Plains. Joel wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws and plays a Mishra's Bobble, then plays a Snow-Covered Plains. Mathieu draws and plays a Forest, tapping it for Magus of the Vineyard. This will give everyone two additional green mana at the beginning of their pre-combat main phase, and he passes turn. Dom draws and puts out a Plains for turn, and casts his Mana Crypt, followed by a Soul Ring. Joel sacrifices his Bobble to look at Dom's top card, and Dom then continues once that's done by playing a Priest of Titania. Joel draws thanks to the Bobble on Miguel's upkeep, and Miguel draws for turn. He plays an Arcane Signet, thanks to the Magus, and puts a Forest into play. He then taps the Signet to cast Elvish Mystic, passing turn. Joel draws and plays in Battlefield Forge. He then casts his commander, Gerard, Weatherlight Hero, and passes. Mathieu draws and plays a tapped Temple of Plenty, scrying one, and putting the card on the bottom. He then plays a Findhorn Elves, and goes to combat. He swings at Joel, hoping he'll block, and Joel does, getting rid of it. Dom wins his Mana Crypt roll, and then draws. He plays an Island, followed by Panharmonicon. He then casts a Reflector Mage, bouncing the Elvish Mystic to Miguel's hand, and Gerard to Joel's hand, passing turn. Miguel plays a Forest, and passes. Joel plays a Reflecting Pool for turn, and casts a Dockside Extortionist, which as it enters, makes four treasures. Mathieu draws and casts Archaeomancer's Map, searching his library for two basic planes. He plays one of them for his land drop, and then passes turn. Dom once more wins his Mana Crypt roll, and draws. He plays a Forest, and then casts a Finale of Devastation, but Joel counters it with Tobalt's Trickery. This has Dom milling his top three, and then flipping into a Guardian project, which enters. With nothing else, he passes. Miguel plays a Terramorphic Expanse, and recasts the Elvish Mystic. At Miguel's end step, Joel casts Wear and Terror, destroying Dom's Guardian project and Panharmonicon. Miguel then cracks a Terramorphic Expanse to go and find a forest, and pass. Joel plays an Arid Mesa in his main phase, and Mathieu puts a Plains into play. 
He then cracks it, losing one, and going to find a snow-covered mountain. He then recasts his commander and passes. Mechu draws and plays an exotic orchard for turn. He casts his commander and then taps all of his remaining mana for a drum bellower, passing. Dom finally fails his mana crypt roll, taking three and draws. He casts his commander as well, and Mirth the Lustrous. He then casts an Eternal Witness, returning Finale of Devastation to hand. Once that's done, he plays a Taft Temple Garden and passes turn. Miguel draws for turn and casts his commander, Baru Fist of Crosa. He plays a Forest for his land drop and passes turn. Joel has a basic land for turn and casts a Shatter Skull Smashing to deal one to the Priest of Titania and the rest on his dockside, destroying both. He then passes to Mathieu. Mathieu draws and moves to his main phase, tapping Silvala to parlay, and everyone reveals a non-land card. This has him creating 4 green mana and gaining 4 life. He then casts Unbound Flourishing, followed by an Elvish Mystic, and passes. Dom fails his mana crypt roll again, taking 3, and draws. He plays a Plains for turn, and once more casts Finale of Devastation. He puts enough into it to go and find a Cloud Blazer, drawing two and gaining two as it enters. Moving to combat, he swings at Joel for six commander damage. At the end of turn, Mathieu once more activates Salvala since she got untapped thanks to the Drum Bellower, making two mana and gaining two life while everyone gets to draw a card. Mathieu untaps his creatures and Miguel draws and casts a Druid class, and then plays a Forest, gaining one. He levels up the Druid class, playing another Forest, and gaining another one. He then casts Azusa's Many Journeys to go and play a third Forest, gaining a third life. Moving to combat, he swings at Joel with the Elvish Mystic and Dom with Baru. In his second main phase, Miguel then casts an Eccentric Farmer, milling three and returning a land card from his graveyard to his hand. At his end step, Mathieu activates Savala, and the table reveals 4 non-land cards, which has him making 4 green and gaining 4 life. Joel draws and plays a Snow-Covered Plains, and then casts a Jeska's Will. Excellent an Imperial Recruiter, Sensei's Divining Top and Snow-Covered Mountain, and making 6 red mana. He plays Tishar, Ancestor's Apostle, followed by the Sensei's Divining Top that he'd exiled. He gets a Tishar trigger from the Sensei's top, and gets to return the Dockside, creating 7 treasures. He then casts the Imperial Recruiter, going to search for Loyal Retainers. Once that's done, he casts Wrath of God. Dom then ephemerates his Reflector Mage, bouncing Gerard back to Joel's hand. In response, Mathieu activates Salvala, and the table reveals 3 non-land cards, and gains him 3 life. Mathieu has to use the mana before they change phases, and he casts Dictate of Karametra. Because it's still Joel's second main phase, he destroys it with Rip Apart and passes. Mechu's turn has him drawing, replaying his commander, and passing. Dom fails his mana crypt roll once again and draws. He plays an island, followed by Rhystic Study, and then the Reality Chip. He casts a Charming Prince, choosing to scry two, and puts one on top and one on bottom. He equips the Reality Chip to the Charming Prince before passing Miguel. Miguel draws and adds another counter to his saga, gaining 3 life. He then plays a Scurry Oak in an Ivy Land Denizen to make 42 million Squirrel Tokens and puts 42 million counters onto the Oak. He then plays a Terramorphic Expanse, gaining 1 life, and passes turn. The crunch is on for the table as Joel draws. He plays a Krark Clan Ironworks and sacrifices a treasure to help cast Chromatic Star, then sacrifices it to make 2 colorless and draw a card. This has him casting a Pyrite Spellbomb, which he then sacrifices to draw another card. He sacrifices the top and then two treasures to help cast Memory Jar. He then plays Sacred Foundry, which comes in tapped and passes. Mechu draws and activates Silvala, which has the table revealing three lands and one non-land, making him one green mana and gaining him one life. He casts Finale of Devastation where X is four, which is copied by the Unbound Flourishing. This lets him put to field an Esper Sentinel and Toski Bearer of Secrets, and he passes to Dom. Dom continues his trend of failing his flip rolls and then drawing for turn. He casts a Wood Elves to find a forest, 
and then cast a Coiling Oracle, revealing his top card and putting it to hand. Once that's done, he casts an Arbor Elf and passes to Miguel. Miguel draws and flips Azusa's many journeys to likeness of the Seeker and then plays a forest gaining one. He then replays his commander and goes to combat. He swings 10 million squirrels at each of his opponents, but Dom casts Seth Tiger to give himself protection from green until the end of turn. Miguel then destroys it with a beast within and pays the one for the Ristic study. Joel at this point sacrifices the memory jar in an attempt to survive but finds nothing. Metsu and Joel get taken out, and in Miguel's second main phase, he plays two forests, gaining two life. In his second main phase, he plays Fungal Rebirth, returning a mana crypt from his graveyard to his hand, and creating two saprolings. He then casts the mana crypt, and passes. Dom wins his mana crypt roll, and then draws. He casts a big Genesis wave, But with nothing to save himself after he reveals them, he scoops up the game to Miguel. Game review time! So, Amareth the Lustrous seemed very much like your generic Bant Commander, which is basically a ton of ETB effects and getting more of them, which is just not my cup of tea. I think Joel was playing some kind of Gerard Storm egg type build where basically he would sacrifice artifacts and then use Gerard to bring them back and then sacrifice them again and then keep doing that ad infinitum until something like Aetherflux Reservoir or just dealing damage with that pirate spell bomb basically took everyone out. Savala Explorer Returned is a card that I've often wondered about how good it is. I like the fact that it ramps you and gains you life, which are two valuable things in EDH, but at the same time giving your opponents resources is often dangerous. I had zero expectations when I saw Baru Fist of Krosa in this game, and honestly I still don't know what to think of it. Unfortunately, Miguel really didn't use it too much, except for one or few turns where he was able to play more than one force to pump up his board, and he relied on a combo which he actually missequenced and would have had to do it the other way around, that I honestly don't know if Barrow was even necessary for. Giving the squirrels plus one plus one and trample would have been great, but when you have a million of them, does it really matter? This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.